What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Mod Squad Network's Layeth the Squad Down. I am your host, Kevin. Uh, Steve is on assignment. He will not be joining us today, but that's okay, because you still got me. Before we get started going into it any further, I want to make sure we take care of the people who take care of us, our sponsors. We have Skullect Me by Jolt7 Studios. Scan this QR code, it'll take you straight to their uh, Facebook page. Lisa is an amazing person. Check out those skulls. Make sure that you tell them that the Mod Squad sent you. Check out Scott Stryker Art. Uh, Scan this QR code, it'll take you straight to his website. And uh, check out his artwork. He's going to be releasing some new art soon. And it's great art at an affordable price. If you are into fan art, you definitely want to check him out. Make sure you check out the Mod Squad community. That's where we hang out and uh, on Facebook and talk about things when we're not here on YouTube or wherever you're listening to this. Um, and our shirts, you scan this QR code right here. It'll take you to the Facebook page to where you can order shirts. And our shirt of the month is going to be a F Cancer shirt. I'm going to have it loaded in soon. Uh, so you can check that out. But if not, make sure you check out some of the other shows if I forget to load this in. Because, you know, that happens. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm going to jump right into it and go right to Raw. Uh, Raw opened with Cody Rhodes. And uh, he was out there for about five minutes or so before being interrupted by the Judgment Day. Uh, this led to Rhodes and Dominic Mysterio trading insults until the Judgment Day decided they heard enough and all three men prepared to attack. When Jay Uso arrived to stand next to the American Nightmare, the Judgment Day were going to attack anyway, but then Sami Zayn and KO showed up and uh, made it a four on three. But then who else shows up but JD McCullough with a chair? And he hands another chair to. Finn Balor and they and Finn and Finn uh, Dominic and JD start heading down and uh, Priest is like, what was going on? Well, why are we going down there? I don't want to do this. And they go down and they ended up getting the brakes beat off their butt um, by uh, Zane, KO, um, Cody, and uh, Jay. So they they took a beating. It was, a, it was a decent way to open Raw, though. It was a good, fun jump start to Raw. But the first actual match is Otis versus Bronson Reed. Dude, I love this match. This is a battle of straight-up heavyweights. Uh, if you like big, meaty men, you're going to like this match. It was a fun match. It, it, very athletic. You wouldn't think... I mean, well, you would, but um, if you're... If you, followed wrestling you knew know that these guys are athletic but they showed some really good athleticism in there with the winner being bronson reed uh it was awesome next we have tomasa champa versus ludwig kaiser kaiser roll ludwig kaiser roll <laughs> with uh tomaso picking up the victory on this this was a really good match as well, guys. It was one of those uh, back and forth. I, I really enjoy this. Ciampa is uh, going through the Imperium to get to um, to get the uh, you know the Ring General <laughs> to because he wants to get a new Goldie. He needs a new Goldie, and uh, the Intercontinental Championship is the way to go for him. Next, we have a. Uh, Natalia versus Tegan Knox, uh, because basically Natalia is saying Tegan don't don't deserve a title shot. She don't deserve a title shot. She has to go through everything. It was it was it was kind of weird. Um, I, I didn't I don't I barely even remember this match. It was a nothing match, but uh, Tegan Knox got the victory. Next we had uh, Dominic Mysterio versus Dragon Lee. Um, this was this was a fun match. This was a really fun match. Dragon Lee made his debut, sort of. He's still in NXT, but he made his debut on uh, Raw. But uh, for the for the for the I think it was for the title. But uh, Dominic Mysterio still wins this match. It was it was a good, really good match. Next 
Next, we get Nia Jax gave an interview with Michael Cole that turned into a fight between her and Zoe Stark. After they were pull, pulled apart by officials ahead of a commercial break, we return to see them begin an official match. That is right. An official match with Nia Jax and Zoe Stark. This was a nothing match. Like, it, it, Nia Jax dominated. It was... It was I, they're really pushing Nia Jax to be a dominant figure. Um, so, yeah, that, that's, 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 Nia Jax picks up the victory on that one. I didn't I didn't care for it, to tell you the truth. Uh, Drew McIntyre appeared on Miz TV this week to talk about choosing not to save Jey Uso when he was being recently attacked. Uh, the New Day came out and criticized Drew McIntyre for how he treated Uso. McIntyre told Kofi Kingston to get in the ring for a match as the show went to a break. Uh, when the fight got started, the New Day uh, used his speed to, to hit several strikes before the Scottish Warrior put him down with one vicious chop. It, it was it was a he it was a fun match. Uh, Drew ended up hitting the Claymore for the win though. Um, it, next we get the Judgment Day versus KO. And Sami Zayn, this was um, it, it, it was it, we've seen this match before. It's 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 kind of getting old. It, if I'm telling the truth, it's kind of getting old. But you know, the Judgment Day does did pick pick up the victory. Uh, Raw Raw was an okay show. It, it was it, it moved some things forward, but in my opinion, it was the lesser of the two. Two for um, it was the lesser of the two for WWE this week, so we're gonna get right into SmackDown. And before I get into SmackDown, I definitely want to say that the WWE breaking news if you have not heard, break the WWE did sign Jade um, from uh, AEW, so. I'm excited to see what this holds. Jade is freaking a powerhouse, a very tall powerhouse. So I can see, I can see um, Nia Jax taking the belt from Rhea Ripley, and then Jade and Nia having a feud at some point. I'm curious to see if they're going to keep Jade in development until maybe the Rumble, kind of keep her off TV for a while, let people kind of forget that she's there, and then the Rumble hit, and then. She comes out and wins the women's rumble. I mean, I think that could be a plan, but I don't know if they want to keep her off TV that long. But anyway, moving on to SmackDown, uh, the Bloodline kicks off the show uh, with uh, Paul Heyman and Uso and Sokoa that with an in-ring promo saying that John Cena is not there yet. He's having travel issues. The promo uh, segued into a match between the Uso and the OC's Carl Anderson because the Carl Anderson jumped him because the the bloodline put AJ in the hospital. We Gallows is already injured, so this had was a match between Jimmy Uso and Carl Anderson, and uh, Jimmy kind of it, it was it was a bit of a squash. Carl had a little bit of offense, but uh, Jimmy took him out. Jimmy took him out. It was it was it wasn't the best match in the world, but it was it was it was a decent way to start SmackDown, I guess. I I, I can see better ways, but they had to they had to announce that Cena was having travel issues so he could show up later in the night. You know. Next we get Bobby Lashley on the Grayson Waller effect. Uh, Bobby Lashley joined Grayson Waller at, with a single back to the drawing board reference. Um, because you know he he said that the street profits just didn't have what 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 it took. Uh, he made a mistake, and then the street profits showed up, and uh, they're like, "Hey, we we want to be part. We want to be with you, Bobby." And Bobby's like, "You got to prove something. You got to prove it." So uh, we'll see if they prove it later in the night. But after the segment, Austin Theory hit the ring to battle Cameron Grimes. Uh, with Waller at ringside, uh, Theory defeated Grimes, though. Um, I don't think that they're pushing Grimes as well as 
they probably should, but he definitely should not be beaten in Austin Theory. Grimes needs some other matches to to work his way up the card. And uh, putting him in a match with Austin Theory, just I don't think that's the way to do it. Uh, next, we have the United States Championship match. Rey Mysterio versus Santos Escobar in an amazing match. Um, I'm... I'm not going to say this is my match of the week yet, but it's definitely up there. This was a fun match. You can see the struggles between Escobar, between doing what he needed to do to win against his idol, Rey Mysterio. Uh, This was a fun match. It ended up being Rey Mysterio picking up the victory, uh, but the Street Profits end up coming in and taking everybody out. Even the LWO who came down to ringside at, during the beatdown. Uh, so uh, the Street Profits showing and proving to Bobby Lashley that they have what it takes. Bobby Lashley, all smiles, walks up the ramp with the Street Profits. It was, it was, a, it was a fun match. It was a fun uh, way to kind of show that the Street Profits was battling with going back into being heels with uh, proving that they have what it takes to be Hills. So that that I'm excited to see what they are doing with the Street Profits. I was worried that they were going to turn the Street Profits back into being faces again, into being good guys. But uh, I'm glad to see that they're going heel. I want to see what they do as Hills. It's going to be a fun ride, especially putting them with Bobby Lashley. I don't know if this is going to be, if they're going to be called the Hurt Business or not, but I... I, I never really liked that name. Uh, hopefully it's a new faction name that they can come up with that uh, suits suits them better. Next we have Charlotte Flair versus Bailey. With uh, Before the match, Charlotte saying, you know, I'm the standard and now you're content with just standing next to the champion being a stepping stone. It kind of, you could see Bailey, you know, she put Bailey in her place. Uh, but Flair defeated Bailey. And uh, we get a an appearance by um, Oscar coming down to ringside to uh, stop a beatdown of Charlotte Flair. And you know, Oscar goes says something in Japanese, and Bailey grabs the mic and said, "Oh, so you want a three way? You and Charlotte versus." Uh, EO for the championship, you got it. And EO's like, she, that's not what she said. <laughs> it, it was kind of funny. She was like, that's not what she said. And But Bailey's like, you got this. You got this. And EO's like, all right, we'll do it. I don't I don't see how uh, – if, if I was a championship, if I was a champion and somebody else took a match for me, I would be highly pissed off. I'm just saying. But John Cena finally makes it to SmackDown. After a long tease, John Cena hit the ring to wrap up the show and reiterate that he will fight the bloodline, Jimmy Uso and Solo Sokoa, in a handicap match. This brought out the the heels who took Cena out only only for someone to show up. But who should show up to help Cena? That's right, L.A. Knight. Yeah, let me talk to you. He came out, took out the bloodline, signed the contract. It's going to be L.A. Knight and John Cena taking on the bloodline at Fastlane. Oh, it's going to be great. Um, I was I was like, there's no L.A. Knight in the show tonight. John Cena's taking L.A. Knight's place, and then L.A. Knight comes down for the save. Honestly, I didn't even, I didn't even think about it. I didn't think about LA Knight and John Cena. Um, it's it's one of those matches that kind of makes sense when you think about it. But I'm, I'm glad to see that it, that's the way that they're going with this match. Uh, LA Knight getting a John Cena rub. So they're definitely pushing the hell out of LA Knight. Uh, all right. We're going to move on to Dynamite. Dynamite kicked off with Phoenix and Jarrett for the Intercontinental AEW Intercontinental Championship. This was a great match with Phoenix defeating Jarrett to retain the title. It, it, it was really fun. Uh, Don Callis and the family 
interview. There was a Don Collison family interview. It, I, I I did not care. I kind of fast forwarded through a bunch of that segment. Don Callis has go away heat for me. Like I'm not a fan of Don Callis. I don't know what it is about him, but he has go away heat for me. It, it was not not the best. Uh, next we have a three way blind eliminator: Nick Jackson versus Brian Cage versus Claudio Castagnoli. This this was a fun match. Um, AEW does three way matches right. Uh, at least recently, They're, they've been doing them really good uh, with uh, Nick Jackson defeating Cage and Castanoli to pick up the victory there. <laughs> Next, we get an Adam Cole and MJF promo. Adam Cole is injured now. Uh, last week, when he jumped off the stage, he blew out his ankle, shattered it in two places is what he's saying. He's going to have to have surgery. Uh, but and he started to say that they're going to have to relinquish the AE, I'm sorry, the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championships. And, L, and uh, MJF is like, whoa, 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 hold up there, cowboy. Uh, you didn't have me wrestle twice in one night to just relinquish these belts. I will face them in a two-on-one handicap match because I know how important these are to you and you are important to me. So he's going to do a two-on-one handicap match at the pay-per-view uh, coming up and and uh, defend those uh, titles. So that that's interesting. Oh, it, it was kind of funny because Roderick Strong comes out with this, Adam! Oh, I, it, it's so annoying. It gets under my skin, but that's what it's supposed to do. Um, he comes out saying, and MJF was like, look, I know that's your boy, and I know that's important to you. Having more than one friend is important to you. And So out of respect to you, go handle your business with your boy. And they walk out, uh, Adam Cole and uh, Roderick Strong and them all walk out. And then Switchblade comes out, and MJF and Switchblade have a promo. This was a really good promo by MJF. I'm telling you, MJF is probably one of the best mo- people on the mic in wrestling today. I think MJF is superior on the mic than Switchblade. He's superior on the mic than just about anybody else. But uh, MJF and Switchblade are going to have a match eventually. And uh, (laughs) we'll see how that turns out. But it was a great promo. Usually I don't like promo segments um, in AEW. They can be boring. But if it involves uh, MJF, I'm all for it because that man is the best on the mic right now. Next, we have Orange Cassidy versus Matt Jackson versus Penta versus Austin Gunn in a three-way match. I mean, I'm sorry, four-way match. This, I want to say, is my match of the week. This was a really good match with Cassidy defeating uh, Jackson, Penta, and Gunn. Um, I really enjoyed this match. This was a fun match. The, all the, When I say match of the week, though, there was, there was no clear winner because... Um, there was some really good matches in WWE. There was some really good matches in AEW. No match totally blew me out the water. I just had to pick one this week. And this one, um, to me was the funnest of them all. So I'm going to pick this one as my match of the week. Really fun match. Highly suggest checking it out if you have not. Next, we got Willow Nightingale versus Julia Hart with Hart defeating Nightingale, continuing her streak of um, being unbeaten if for the past like year or so. Uh, next, we have a contract to end the night. We have a contract signing with Hangman Adam Page and Swerve Strickland. Um, this led to Hangman Adam Page actually stabbing Swerve with a pen while he was signing the contract uh, after a back and forth. You know how they do. They talk back and forth during a contract signing. But it... it it wasn't as entertaining as it should be. It picked up at the end with a stabbing of the hand. So that was kind of cool. But that was your AEW Dynamite. Uh, let's move on to Collision. Uh, Collision actually opened up with the Kingdom versus Best Friends. Uh, Chuck Taylor and Trent Beretta didn't wait for the bell to ring before going after Matt Taven and Mike Bennett. But the Kingdom do pick up the victory. This was this was a good match. This was a real good match. 
Uh, next, we have a Julia Hart match, another Julia Hart match versus Verda Vixen. Uh, Hart picked up the victory again. Uh, again, continuing her unbeaten streak. And then she called out Chris Statlander. Chris Statlander comes out. Julia Hart then rolls out the ring after calling her out. It was so weird. Like She's like, come out here, Chris. And then once Chris gets out there and in the ring, Julia's like, I'm out. It was, it was, it was an uncalled for segment. I think that they just needed a filler just to see them face-to-face before the pay-per-view. Um, next, we get the Gates of Agony versus Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega. This was this was a this was a squash. Uh, Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega was having this match to basically see if they can coexist uh, as a tag team because they do not like each other. They will never like each other, but they need to see if they can be a tag team and they can trust each other because they are going to be going up against Don Callis and his crew and the family. So uh, they just needed a match together. Uh, Omega and Jericho does pick up the victory, by the way. (laughs) Let's see. uh, The Righteous had another promo video directed at MJF and Cole before they stepped into the ring with the two talents named Julius Incaris and Travis Williams for for another squash match with the Righteous getting the victory. I'm not big on the Righteous. I don't... they, They don't look like a tag team to me. They look like just two guys on the street who are athletic, who can, they, they don't look, they don't look, I don't know. Is they, they don't do it for me. The righteous just don't do it for me. Maybe they got to grow on me, but as for now, they're not doing anything. Next, we got FTR, Brian Danielson and Wheeler Yuta versus Ozzy Open, Big Bill and Ricky Starks. I, this was the main event of the night. This was a, this, this was a fun eight man tag match. But Ricky Starks, Big Bill, and Aussie Open pick up the victory with Starks getting the pinfall. This was this was kind of fun. This was this was a fun match, very entertaining, very athletic. Uh, Ricky Starks picked up the vet, pick up the victory because the revolution is televised. You know how it goes. All right, guys, that is this week in wrestling. It was it was a fun week. You had the um, uh, penultimate, not the penultimate. You had the go-home shows on AEW for their pay-per-view tonight, Sunday night, um, for their pay-per-view. I can't remember what their pay-per-view's name is called right now. It's just slipping my mind. WWE moved some storylines forward, but nothing, not a huge needle mover. it's a it's a slow build on a lot of those storylines. I'm curious to see what Jay Uso is going to be doing since what they're going to be doing with him, uh, with everybody not liking that he's on Raw. Um, I'm curious to see about L.A. Knight and John Cena. To me, that's just money. I it, L.A. Knight getting the John Cena rub is going to be awesome. Just going to put him over even more. So I'm excited for that. All right, guys, as we come to a close, make sure you check out the last podcast you'd want. That is Steve's podcast. You, uh, If you like entertainment and movie news and stuff like that, go check that out uh, right there. Make sure you check out my podcast, the last podcast you'd want. That is the sister channel to the Mod Squad Network. Also check out the Daily Dank if you like cannabis news and entertainment Check it, that out on Facebook. Um, also, check out the other shows here on the Mod Squad Network. You're watching the wrestling show, but we have a Movie Talk Monday. We have a horror show. We have a gamer show, and we go live every Saturday night with a giveaway. All right, guys, I do believe that does it for this episode of the Mod Squad Network's Layeth the Squad Down. So for Steve, who is not here, I am Kevin saying, thank you for being a friend, everybody.